Hi students, welcome back to chapter 3, Chemistry 1510 video notes. We are going to pick up where we left off with uh, combustion analysis. So, uh, combustion analysis is pretty uh, wild and the math behind it can be a little bit difficult. So, we will try to stay uh, nice and slow. So, when we look at combustion analysis, um, what I want you to remember is that uh, combustion is a chemical reaction and it is the process of burning things and when we burn things the elements in a compound they get changed into other compounds so specifically if we look at the figure that's on the next page um, we can describe what is happening here and what the chemical reaction looks like so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a sample and typically our sample is something that contains carbon and hydrogen and when something contains uh, something carbon and hydrogen we call it a hydrocarbon right so this is a hydrocarbon because it contains carbon and hydrogen and this is your sample that you're starting with and see how there's an X and a Y down here those are there because we don't necessarily know the chemical formula of the thing that we are putting in our combustion analysis process. So this is a process that's going to help us figure out if the sample that we have, you know, what is that sample? So let's talk about how this process works. So if I can have your attention up here in this diagram, uh, we'll start looking at this. So when we look at this diagram, notice how there is an O2 and an arrow pointing to the right. This is saying that we are putting oxygen inside this system. And inside this little box, this is where your sample lives. And we have pushed oxygen through this entire system so that there is enough oxygen for your sample to burn completely. So this is gonna burn and it's going to be a hundred percent combustion or a complete combustion because sometimes when things combust they don't combust all the way right that's why you actually get like in fireplaces and stuff you see soot right so that soot is carbon that has not combusted all the all the way uh it's just elemental carbon it's it's like the stuff inside your pencil essentially um, instead of it combusting all the way in which it would turn into carbon dioxide. So you have your sample in here and then there's some wires that aren't actually drawn in this picture, but like let's kind of pretend that they're connected here, right? And so you got probably a little pan uh, where your sample is sitting on. There's a wire connected to that and then you got a big button right there and you press that button, that's me pressing the button, and the electricity will go and ignite the sample. And so then what happens is your sample burns, and as your sample burns, the gases that are created flow through these tubes. So in this first tube, it says that this first tube absorbs water. So the first tube is going to take all of the water out of the gas mixture and absorb it. And then the material that's remaining will come through here and it'll go through the CO2 absorber and any carbon dioxide that's in that mixture of gases will get absorbed there. And then anything that's left over will come out this direction. And um, you're not supposed to have anything left over if you have just carbon and hydrogen in your sample. But sometimes you might have other elements present. And if there are other elements present, then they will come out this way and uh, get collected in another fashion. So let's talk about why there's a CO2 and an H2O absorber. So if we focus back in over here on our chemical formula for um, our fake, well not fake, but our unknown uh, formula for our hydrocarbon, notice how it consists only of carbon and hydrogen. When we then look at the products that are created during the course of a chemical reaction, do you see how during in these products 
you have carbon in one of the structures and then hydrogen in the other compound. So all of your carbon is gonna turn into the carbon in CO2. And all of this hydrogen is gonna turn into the hydrogen that's in H2O. So part of the problem is we can't balance this equation because we don't know the chemical formula that we're starting with. But what we do know is all the carbon turns into CO2 and all of the hydrogen turns into H2O and that this guy, that oxygen, that is an excess. Right? meaning that the CXHY, that's your limiting reactant, and your O2 is going to be your excess reactant. And so in words right here, we're just summarizing the same thing, that all your carbon turns into the carbon that's in CO2, and all your hydrogen turns into the hydrogen that's in H2O. So let's look at what and an uh, example of this might actually look like. So here, this says a 1.125 gram sample of a hydrocarbon was burned um, in excess oxygen, and it's gonna produce so many grams of carbon dioxide and so many grams of water. What is the mass percent of each element in the hydrocarbon? So let's uh, go ahead and start this problem. So the goal here, is to take your carbon dioxide, oops, I'm still in highlighter mode, to take the mass of the CO2 and figure out what mass of carbon is in the CO2. And then separately, to take your mass of your water and figure out the mass, oops, my goodness, of the hydrogen that's in that uh, sample of water. So let's work on that. We have 3.477 grams of carbon dioxide. And when we have this many grams of carbon dioxide, we can convert this to moles. So the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44.0. Oh goodness. 0.01 grams, and that's for one mole of CO2. Well, the problem is, is we don't really want our CO2. We want the carbon that's inside the CO2. So what we'll do is we'll continue this process, and we'll say in one mole of CO2, there is one mole of carbon. So then we can do the same thing with water. We'll start with our mass of water and we'll go through and we will calculate the amount of moles this is equivalent to. And then we don't want the moles of water, we want the amount of hydrogen present. So in one mole of water, there are two moles of hydrogen. And so notice how I stopped here at moles of hydrogen and moles of carbon. Let's just pause for a moment and think of where we wanna go next. So if we're asked for the mass percent of each element in the hydrocarbon, remember that in our formula for mass percent, our percent for carbon would be the grams of carbon divided by the grams of the sample, which was conveniently given. And then our percent of hydrogen would be our grams of hydrogen. Divided by the mass of the sample. And so let's look back up at our work that we have up here. In this work, what we see 
is we're ending with moles. And that's a problem if we want mass. So you can either stop here with the moles and then separately off to the side go to mass, but that seems kind of silly because what we can do is just tack on one more term. And we can say in one mole of carbon, there's 12.01 grams of carbon. And in one mole of hydrogen, there's 1.01 grams of hydrogen. And then we can put this into our calculator. So I'm gonna take a moment to calculate. And let's see, um, 3.477 divided by 44.01, and then we're gonna multiply that by 12.01. It's a pretty small number, but that makes sense because we were only had one gram to start with. Let's look at sig figs. Over here, you have four sig figs. You have four, you have four. This is a definition, so it doesn't count. And remember the one up here, those don't count either. So I want to report four significant figures, so I'm going to report 0.9488 uh, grams of carbon. And then I want to go through the same process um, over here, which is going to be, oh, you know what, I'm going to do mine, and mine might be a little different than yours. Uh, two, nine, that should be pretty darn close, grams of hydrogen. So then we can take these numbers and put them in our percent uh, formulas. And so we'll take our percent of hydrogen and uh, fill in the grams for that. And we'll take our mass of carbon and fill it in here. And then we can just finish by dividing those two numbers and getting your final answer and dividing those two numbers and getting this final answer. Remember that significant figure wise, you have four sig figs and four sig figs, so you should have four right, in each of these percentages. Let's see if we have another example. Oh, nope, that's it. Okay, so when we come to class, we are going to do more practice with these because they are really kind of difficult. So um, I'm going to leave it at that and we'll pick up with empirical and molecular formulas in our final installment of chapter three. Thanks so much for your attention. Katoni signing out.